Hi, I'm going to talk to you about RunX. RunX is a new OCI cont compatible containers runtime to stack containers as Zen VMs. Now, let me go slower on this, on this sentence because it, it, it captures a lot of meaning. So it's an OCI compatible because it's, it, it's implementing the runtime OCI spe specification. Uh, and it's a runtime, so it can be used together with container D, for instance, uh, to start containers as Zen VMs. What does that mean? Let me go forward quickly uh, to one, one slide to show you this diagram to better explain the concept. Normally, a container um, is fetched by container D, and then container D installs the container on your host system, then calls uh, a binary called run C to run the application in the container. So run C is the, the component that is responsible for setting up the runtime environment. And in fact, is the one uh, conforming to the OCI runtime specification. So run C, uh, to oversimplify what run C does as a way of explanation, it chi roots into the container, set up some additional Linux namespaces, and then runs the application. So run X is a replacement for run C. So it works at the same level, it complies to the same interface, it started from container D the same way, but instead of chi rooting into your application, what RunX does is it starts a little micro VM, virtual machine, uh, using the Xena hypervisor to run your container. So this is not a large virtual machine. It's not like RunX starts a virtual machine with Debian and inside even Docker and then running a container that way. No, this is a tiny, tiny micro VM, just enough to run the container application inside uh, a virtual machine environment. Uh, so there is, uh, pretty, there is pretty much just the container inside plus a kernel just enough to run the application. Um, so um, you can find RunX uh, on GitHub under the Linux Foundation Edge umbrella. So it's LF Edge RunX. Uh, and the main purpose of RunX is running containers as virtual machine for embedded. So it's targeting embedded as uh, the primary focus. So why running containers as VMs and what does it mean for embedded? A number of things. So first of all, running containers as VMs um, give you a lot more isolation and security by default. Um, so it supports things such as multi-tenancy. But aside from that, uh, it comes with a number of interesting features, uh, the key differences compared to regular containers, they make it suitable for embedded environments. Um, for instance, it supports real-time, hard real-time. That's because uh, Xen VMs uh, support a very strong form of real-time, including even cache isolation for best performance and minimal latency. And you can easily configure one of these container VMs to be started with real-time attributes. So if you care about real time, uh, you can have very strong form of real times using RunX. And the, another, another feature which is important typically in embedded is hardware access. So very often uh, application need access, direct access to, to hardware, uh, to accelerators uh, and, other, and other peripherals, GPIO controllers, all sorts of things. Um, and you can, uh, give direct access to these resources using RunX, as we'll see later in the presentation, by giving direct access to the memory map regions of these devices and interrupt. So your container application can actually interact directly with the hardware in, in, in the way it wishes. So RunX is an open source project, as I said, under LF Edge. So it's open for contributions. Uh, it has been open for contribution from the start. So just send an email uh, with a patch to the mailing list, uh, we'll review and commit. So there is no need to sign any licensing agreement. The license is a, uh, is a patch v2, and we are open for contribution with a contribution model similar to the Linux kernel and Zen. Um, it's time to get into the implementation choices. So what does make RunX unique? Uh, so why RunX instead of another project in this space well, starting from the default, which is run C, to other projects to start uh, containers as VMs, such as Kata containers. 
why RunX is different? Well, RunX is different in a number of ways. First of all, RunX aim at being very, very small, very simple, suitable for very limited uh, uh, embedded environments. So it's very simple, both at build time as well as runtime, uh, optimizing for having a minimal overhead, minimal uh, dependencies to, to reduce the size of the binaries, uh, as well as uh, the startup times, boot times, uh, suitable for environment, as, as I said, with limited resources. In terms of the build, um, RunX strives to be as simple and as easy as possible. So the only build time dependencies that we have are uh, GCC, make, and go, the Golang compiler. And the Golang compiler uh, is probably going to go away soon as a dependency. So that means that soon we're going to have just GCC and make and nothing else as build time dependencies. Um, that means that it's actually easy to cross compile RunX. So if you install a Linaro cross compiler, for instance, on your regular distribution, you can cross compile RunX on your x86 laptop for an ARM64 target quite easily. And you'll see it later in this slide deck. Uh, it's also important to note that there is no Xen dependency at build time at all. So what that means is that you can easily build RunX on your uh, AWS container, VM, uh, any environment. You don't need to have Xen there. Uh, it, can be, it can be a completely different environment for you from your target uh, because RunX is completely self-contained, both in terms of build time dependencies, but also in terms of runtime dependencies. So let's look at the runtime dependencies. So of course you need Xen installed because otherwise you're not gonna be able to start Xen virtual machines. But aside from that, you only need Bash, JQ, Socket, and Demonize. So very small, very, very limited amount of utilities. They just needed to uh, do a little bit of parsing, uh, and that's it. So you can easily build uh, in an environment like uh, I, I, I often build on a Debian uh, container on x86 and then deploy on an ARM64 Alpine Linux machine or on Yocto uh, or in any other uh, environment. Another very important point to make is that there is no dependencies between Xen and RunX. So that means you, that you can uh, easily upgrade Xen, change version of Xen, uh, independently from your RunX version. You, you can build and run RunX in a way that is completely independent from your Xen version. Now, this is very different from Kata Container that used to have, at least uh, the last time I looked, Xen support by linking directly against libxl. That meant there, were, there was a built-time dependency against Xen and also a tie between the Xen version you built against and then you are going to run against both of the user space tool and the hypervisor that made the, uh, the old system much harder to build and to deploy. Um, other choices in RunX that are uh, different from other projects is that RunX doesn't have any in-guest agents. So uh, what RunX does uh, is uh, it builds a very small at build time, a very small Linux kernel, disabling most options because you know beforehand the environment that is going to run within, which is your micro VM, your Xen little virtual machine. So you can disable a lot of drivers. So you build a small Linux kernel, then you build a statically linked busybox uh, RAM disk environment. Uh, and this is just to provide just enough setup to set up the network and run the uh, application in the container. And that's it. So in other words, your uh, user space environment inside the virtual machine created by the RunX is your pristine container environment. There is no foreign agent, strange daemon running just to connect to services on the host side. There is nothing, just your container and a minimal kernel for POSIX compatibility. Uh, speaking of the VM, the VM as well is as small as possible, so there is no device emulation, um, it's a minimal environment, there is no in-guest firmware or bootloader, there is no BIOS, no UFI, no ACPI, uh, no grab, nothing, just straight boot to the tiny Linux kernel uh, and nothing else. Um, finally, um, RunX builds against the OCI runtime specification. 
And the OCI runtime specification, first of all, is a well-maintained spec, but is also a very nice abstraction level. And we feel is like the right abstraction level to develop a component against. Uh, so uh, that way it's gonna work not just with container D, which is our default testing environment, that's what we're working against today, but it works with any other OCI compatible container engines, uh, which um, greatly incre increases uh, your, you know, your, your deployment strategies. So this is all different from other, you know, from other projects that don't build against an OCI specification, uh, or for instance, they require uh, agents inside your VMs and to connect to OS services. Okay, let's look at the build. So let's say that you want to build Renex on your uh, Linux distro, could be Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, you name it. Uh, to make this thing more interesting, uh, let's say that you want to cross build it. So you are building on your x86 laptop and you want to deploy it on, a, on an ARM target, uh, could be a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, could be a Xilinx board, any ARM64 uh, SOCs. Um, you just need to uh, have a cross compilation tool chain. So your ARM64 GCC, um, you can use the one from Linaro, for instance. You need the Golang compiler, compiler and the one from your distro, the package from your distro, uh, it's fine. So you, we don't need, you don't need to, uh, to go any extra length, just install the Golang compiler. And then that's it. You just, uh, you just select arch uh, equal, you set the environmental variable arch equal arch64, you set go root, you, you set the cross compile environmental variable, you execute the build script, and you're gonna come up with uh, your um, build artifacts, your output, and it's done. So what are what is your out the output of the build? The output of the build is a set of scripts. Um, Ranex itself, the, the entry point, uh, is the, the main script uh, you should copy and you know copy into the target under user bin or users bin, and then a set of other scripts and um, that they need to be copied on the target to user share Renex. Among these, there is the kernel we mentioned earlier and the RAM disk uh, that are provided for compatibility so that you can run your traditional container inside the VM. Uh, so it's quite easy to install on target. Uh, that's one of the things I was trying to say, because you just need to copy Runex to the target, copy user share Runex to the target, and that's it. After that, the only thing you need to do is configure ContainerD uh, to use Runex instead of RunC. How do you do that? So in ContainerD prior to version 1.2.9, you just edit config.tamo in case you, do, you didn't know, config.taml is the main uh, configuration file for containerd, and it lives under etc containerd config.taml. So the only thing you need to do is set the runtime to users being runx as shown on the slide. Um, if containerd is greater than 1.4.0, uh, instead, um, instead of the config.taml configuration route, instead you have to pass uh, minus minus run C minus binary equal to the run X path. And that chooses a different uh, run, X, run C binary for you uh, directly from the command line. Unfortunately, container D in between these two versions, so the 1.3 uh, series of container D does not seem to offer a way to change the runtime, but at least we haven't found one easy to, uh, to use yet. Uh, so you, you, you have to resort to little hacks such as uh, renaming run X to run C so that container D will execute it thinking it is run C. Not nice, but it works. And now I'll leave it to Bruce to tell you how to use run X with Yocto. Yeah, um, uh, I'm going to go over um, how we sort of have integrated run X to, to the, an extension or, or to, to wrap what Stefano was talking about, about the simple build, how we can put it into a sort of deeper um, Yocto stack, uh, OE built stack, if you will, so that you can both build a, sort of the platform, run X, Zen, the guests and everything all in one um, uh, build and then be able to deploy it. Uh, so that's what I'm going to, to, to talk about. 
Um, but first, um, I, I should say a little bit about myself. I work, I've been a maintainer in the Octo for 11 years now. Uh, I look after the uh, meta virtualization layer in the Octo as well as some reference kernels and other things and, and hence why um, I was able to help do this, this integration. As you'll see, we've talked quite a bit about meta virtualization. Um, and to put that in context, in case people aren't familiar with um, Yocto and Open Embedded, um, you know, I'm going to quickly cover, you know, sort of why would you use Yocto Open Embedded to, to, to build? And then uh, I'll go into a little bit of uh, how the, it's pulled together in layers. And, and, and I've captured some uh, build examples and configurations that you um, that we that I was doing as part of our uh, pulling this together and doing it and uh, getting ready so we could demo it. Um, so you know the question is as Stefano was saying, sure it, it's absolutely great for um, the way Runx is built for local development, for quick development, for um, an individual developer. So you know why would you ever even bother to bring open embedded in Yocto build and deploy into the picture because obviously every layer you add, it's a little bit more complexity, it's a little bit more time. Um, and the big thing is that um, if you go check out the Yocto project and open embedded, if we have an integration with them, then we can immediately leverage some of those open embedded and Yocto project core values, you know, things like the ability to do, uh, you know, the configurability, license management, uh, it's of course, uh, you know, leverage its cross build capabilities. You don't need another tool chain. You can do fine grained image composition, tuning, all of these, there's all kinds of things to build your own embedded distro and uh, capabilities that Yocto and Open Embedded bring to the, the table there. It also opens up uh, a transition path from development to production. So you can take that um, while you're playing around with RunX and learning how uh, integrating it with a, a deeper framework and launching containers, whether it be Containerd or something larger, uh, you can take that work, capture it into your recipe, into a layer, and then you have a way that you can um, hand that configuration to somebody else. You can go into a, you know, a production environment, you know, CI, CD, all of those things are um, fairly straightforward to do once you've uh, Dot use the if you're using the the Yocto um, ecosystem integration, I would say that also what you get with this is with um, Open Embedded Yocto is that there's an active community and integration with some of the BSPs that you might uh, want to use. You know whether it be a Xilinx, a Raspberry Pi, uh, a, a generic other type. You know any any Yocto compatible BSP that's capable of supporting Zen. You can find a layer, you can find a kernel, and you can use that community's BSP to, to build and, and get a platform. You don't have to go source all of those bits yourself and get a vendor kernel and, and figure it out. And the other thing that I find at least interesting is that we can do what are called multi-config builds. Um, I'm not gonna go into great detail on the mechanics of that, but what it allows um, within uh, in the recent versions of uh, the recent releases of Yocto is that you can do, you can build your Zen host, your guests, your containers, and your firmware in a single configuration, in a single platform. It knows how to switch tool chains. It knows how to compose different images and then bundle them all together and everything that you need to deploy. So you don't have to keep track of all the dependencies and revisions of the software and able to make a reproducible build, it does that automatically with, uh, with a multi-config build. And as I've been hinting at, the build of RunX within Yocto, it's an integration. Um, it doesn't replace all of this, the, the simplicity and the ease of build that Stefano was talking about. It is wrapping that into a recipe. It's using the same components for you. You know, It's making sure the Yocto cross compiler is there. It's building that same init RD. It's building, uh, packaging the RunX scripts into uh, whatever the, the package of your, your package manager of your choice is. And it's uh, integrating them into a larger uh, image build. But you can, at any point, do your development and build directly with that upstream LF Edge uh, RunX at any time. It, it, in no way 
replaces or changes that, it simply integrates it into that uh, one-stop shop. All right, next slide. Um, to step back a little bit, I hinted at this when I was trying to, you know, uh, um, describe why we would do this integration. So I would say that Run X within uh, the Yocto project, if you will, it's open embedded core plus a BSP plus meta virtualization are these three big components. Um, and in the Yocto project, those are, uh, they're layers. Uh, and so those layers, they define the platform and all of your software stack possibilities. So these layers contain all kinds of things, much more than RunX, much more than you might want to use uh, to build a system capable of, um, uh, of leveraging RunX. Um, we then have a way that we can have a distribution, configuration, uh, package recipes, and image recipes. They come in to play when you are customizing and picking, choosing how you want the individual components to be customized uh, and how you want the images to be com composed. And what I was doing uh, for the integration is, you know, we have baseline references for all of this that can be extended or directly used. Um, and so for Run X, you know, OE Core provides the base support. That's your tool chain, you know, your base packages, whether it be your core utils or your, you know, your reference kernel and these sort of things. And it does the image construction and it provides the, the lowest level, all of the common parts of the build. Um, when we layer on meta virtualization, uh, that's what brings us in container runtimes and support. So, you know, I encourage you to go check out meta virtualization if you're interested in this. And there's all kinds of different, um, both um, virtual machines, container runtimes, and supporting projects that are found within uh, the uh, meta virtualization layer. So, you know, that's where we get container D, CNI, if you want to use that. That's where we have the Zen host. Uh, image recipe, uh, as well as the DOM zero, um, it gets built out of that. And of course, a U-boot, an NRD, an image build are all defined in, uh, in meta virtualization. Um, and then finally, your BSP layer that comes into play is what provides your kernel, your bootloader, your firmware, or any tightly coupled uh, user space packages. And in the example that I'm going to go over, I'm using uh, meta Xilinx uh, so we can, uh, as, as the example, um, BSP provider layer. All right, next slide. I captured a little bit of what I did uh, as a as sort of a, <coughs> a reference build. Um, and that's on the, that's on the ZCU 102. Um, it can be booted on hardware and it can also be um, booted in uh, on QEMU. Which is why we chose it. So it's it's quite accessible. Uh, as an example, you can do this. Uh, you can you can spin images on anything that supports Zen in the right way. So obviously the Raspberry Pi is another good example of something you could build. Um, and so I'm not going to walk through every single little step of this, but I wanted to point out uh, this shows what I was talking about in these layer stacks that you know we we clone. The main, you know, open embedded core, and in this example, it's using the the Pocky reference, which is the Yocto uh, uh, reference uh, for that. I'm bringing in Meta Open Embedded for some uh, higher level packages, Meta Virtualization, and of course, I'm bringing in the Xilinx open source components from uh, GitHub. Um, we got, uh, you know, we initialize the build environment. This is standard Yocto stuff. We um, create ourselves a, a, a build workspace, if you will. And then we add the layers that I was talking about, which is, so we need file systems, we need Python, work networking, course meta virtualization, and then three parts of the um, Xilinx uh, BSB. Those last three would change based on uh, your target machine, what hardware, whether it's emulate, whether it's uh, uh, virtualized uh, hardware or not. But everything else, the top part, it stays the same. It would always be would also be done. And now this, <laughs> it gets a little bit, um, so this is a, 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 not everything that you would need um, and it will be pulled into what we call a distro configuration. So it can a little bit more out of the box, but it's just showing, this is some of the things that you need to set in your local.conf, which is your local build workspace to say, you know, what you want to happen in the build. 
Um, it's mainly here for reference, but I'll hit a few high points on it. Um, we're saying that we, you know, the, the machine that we're building for, which I mentioned, which is the ZCU 102, um, we, I mentioned a multi-config build being one of the good things for Yocto. We're defining one here um, to actually build some firmware that is needed to um, actually boot uh, the platform. You could easily substitute out, that out to actually build a container that you were deploying, multiple containers, um, different VMs, whatever you want. In this example, I'm only building um, the, uh, the, the, the firmware because we're actually pulling in the, in the down containers directly from Docker, Docker Hub to show that they can be run. Um, it's turning on some distro features, as I mentioned. We need Zen, we need virtualization. Um, and then it's making sure that container D and run C are, are in the image. After that, it's some um, configuration to make sure that we're using the Xilinx QE mute so we can boot the platform. And then it's, it's all just, it, it's standard stuff. Um, and then there's a multi-configuration um, for the PMU that I mentioned. Um, and that just says, it indicates how to build that secondary bit of um, uh, software that, that you need to boot. The one thing I'll say is that everything that, uh, that we're showing for, and for the Yocto integration, um, it is mostly, I would say 95% now available in the master branch of meta virtualization and any other patches to say OE core uh, or the projects they've been sent out. Stefano has merged things into RunX, for example. And so we're, we're covered on that front. So it, it should be reproducible um, out, of, out of a build. Um, if you weren't using multi-config because you happen to be on an older Yocto project or for some reason it wasn't available, um, you can fetch some of these pre-built binaries from uh, Yocto's, uh, sorry, Xilinx's uh, site. And I, I gave an example just so people will know there's an option to a multi-config build if, if they need it. And I'm not going to go into any detail at all on those because they're automatically built if you use the multi-config. And then finally, you build your image after all that configuration set up. And in this, I'm building two. You really only need Zen image minimal uh, for what we're, we're demoing with RunX. But core image minimal is a good test, um, simpler image to build to make sure that everything is seen in your configuration. What happens after that build, you know, it will go away and it'll churn depending on the speed of your build server. Uh, it could be first build from a clean build, it could be two hours because you're building everything. Subsequent builds will use what's, you know, what's called S state cache. Um, it will reuse and only build what's, so subsequent builds are much faster. So you might have a bit of a long first build, but what happens is the outputs get, the outputs that we've defined get dropped into this deploy directory, which is in your build, it's build temp deploy images your machine, that's where these files will be sitting. And so in the example builds that I talked about, uh, I did a, a few listings, you'll get a Zen image minimal, which you know shows up as about 76 um, megabytes as uh, a U-boot uh, configured RAM disk, if you will, uh, and which is the same, it's just the, it's the same as the, the compressed tarball. It's a bit bigger if it's in the different formats and I'm, I'm highlighting here that we built uh, in that configuration, multiple different types of images out of uh, the packages. You also would get the actual, the kernel, the boot image, which is, you know, it's about 17 megabytes uh, compressed and 56 megabytes in this image that UB, which is defined in meta virtualization to make sure it's U-boot um, compliant, if you will. Um, and finally, we also actually built uh, U-boot. And so that's much smaller. So from what I said before, you get the bootloader, you get the kernel, and you get the minimal host image, uh, the, everything that you would need uh, in order to deploy the system in, out of the single build. All right. Um, there is some target configuration interaction that are required. Um, either for the boot, you may need to talk to U-boot, or as Stefano was, uh, Mentioning, you may need to edit. You may need to edit the config.toml of container D. That's what I'm, I'm talking about there. There's still some things 
um, that we can make either into configuration packages or do different things. But there is a little bit of um, tweaking you still may need to do. Uh, and then in this slide, I showed how you would launch directly from your um, build directory, how you could test out um, what you did. So I have two, you use this uh, command, which is a Yocto project standard command called run QEMU. Uh, you, I booted this simple core image minimal, it would boot to a prompt, um, a head, uh, you know, a headless, you know, text-based console, you can log in and have a look. And I also um, show that you would launch just by changing the image name, you could do run QEMU on Zen image minimal. Um, and, no graphics slurp says run it headless and use user space networking. Much easier than setting up a ton and tap for most people's uh, purposes. And that I, um, is how you would boot the two different images. All right. And so here I wanted to show that yes, if you boot Zen image minimal and you're talking to you boot, um, there is a little bit of configuration. Um, I'm not sure if it's in our slides, but there is a image builder uh, available, I think it is somewhere in the slides where you can get this generated. You don't have, you do not write this by hand because it's error prone, but this is showing that um, for U-Boot, it's showing that, you know, it, what you would have to do, you know, you TFTP the image, you need to get the DTBs, you need to get the Zen um, uh, RAM disk for the, you know, and, and, and the core, I mean, and, the, and it's minimal image. You need to do a little bit of FDT, some device tree manipulations for uh, Dom zero and, and, and Zen, so everything knows where it is, and then you boot it. Um, so again, this is here for reference to let people know that you might have to do this if you're, uh, and it would vary for the hardware you're using, but you don't write it by hand. There are ways to to generate this. All right, and that's uh, yeah, yeah, that's it for me. Back to uh, Stefano. All right, so. We have seen how to build and uh, how to run RunX. As I mentioned, normally for traditional containers, RunX will provide a kernel and a RAM disk. So why? So a, a container is essentially a set of user space Linux binaries. But if we want to be pedantic, a set of uh, POSIX com compatible user space application. So we need to provide that POSIX compatibility layer uh, to run them. And that is basically what a kernel is for. Um, so we need to provide that kernel to run inside the virtual machine to provide the POSIX compatibility layer. The little RAM disk is only necessary to set up pretty much the network and identify which one among the application in the container is the one to run. Um, so both the kernel and the RAM disk are provided by RunX. So when you do um, run me a container, uh, please RunX go and find the container, then um, automatically set up a virtual machine configuration for you uh, behind the scenes and call Excel create. Excel is a typical utility to start and stop VMs on Zen. Uh, providing the kernel and the RAM disk itself. So RunX is the one giving the kernel and RAM disk for the VM. However, there is no reason why uh, it could be different, right? Uh, the kernel could come from the container itself. So why? Keep in mind that with RunX, the isolation, the security boundary is the virtual machine, is not the kernel. So the VM, the uh, dotted box on the right on the slide is the security and isolation boundary. So it doesn't really matter from a security perspective what you run inside. So there is no reason why the kernel has to come from RunX. The kernel could come from some, some, somewhere else. Uh, RunX will be very happy to run that kernel instead to provide the compatibility the POSIX compatibility layer inside the VM. So of course, what the, 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 the ve a very good candidate for providing a different kernel is the container itself. So the container could come with uh, a kernel inside its own file system. Uh, you can imagine the container having a slash boot slash VM Linux binary, and then uh, it will just pass it to RunX RunX will find the kernel and use that kernel instead. Because again, RunX doesn't really care which kernel to run inside the VM. Um, so this is what, uh, so this is already supported now. Uh, and uh, the only thing that we, we, we need in addition to what I just described is a way to advertise the presence of the kernel or the presence of the RAM disk inside the container. So the container needs to be able to say, hello, I have a kernel, please run my kernel. 
and then run xcool finds this kernel and see, ah, the container is coming with the kernel. I might as well use his own kernel and then use the kernel inside the VM. So today we are doing that using um, environmental variables, uh, but we really want to have proper labels or annotations specified as part of the OCI image spec. So why would you want to do that though? So is there a good reason? Um, so you can imagine multiple reasons to do this. So first of all, you can have your own, you can decide to use your own special kernel version. You might decide to want to have the latest upstream or you might want to have the rel kernel or the Debian kernel, or you might want to have a very specific driver that is not upstream yet. Uh, or you might want to have the real-time path set applied. So you might want to run Linux RT. Well, as I mentioned, Runex is, ma is built ma mainly for embedded. Uh, one thing that is very important in many embedded deployment is real-time. So if you're going to set up the VM to be real-time, then you might as well have also real-time kernel inside the VM. Uh, so these are all reasons, but I can add that you, you know, that are easy to guess, but I can add one more reason that might be less uh, easy to guess, a bit more far-fetched uh, maybe, which is why not, you know, not running an Artos? So if you can specify your own kernel, it doesn't have to be a Linux kernel. It could be a different kernel altogether. In fact, it could be a tiny bare metal application, or it could be a real-time OS. It could be a Zephyr kernel, or it could be a free Artos kernel, packaged as a container and advertised as the kernel to run. And then run X, it doesn't really care if it's Linux or another kernel as long as it runs in the VM. So it will just call Excel create as usual. And what you end up is with the VM with your kernel inside, with your Artos running inside. So now you have a way uh, to use Kubernetes to deploy at scale on target your real-time application built with a, a real real-time OS uh, using Xen VMs uh, and all the, um, you could exploit all the configuration to get the best possible uh, latency in these environments. Of course, uh, if you're gonna do um, uh, Artos, uh, it's very important to be able to assign uh, directly uh, hardware to them uh, because that is where they are most useful so that they also drive a physical resource. And we also, we're gonna see soon how that can also be done. So in summary, as I mentioned, uh, so Ranex comes today with support for container with a kernel. Uh, so the container, the container can specify its own kernel version, or it can also specify its own Rambis version, uh, so that is less useful. Um, so that the container can select its own special version of Linux, any version of Linux, but also non-Linux OSs, from RTOSs to bare metal applications, uh, and even proprietary kernels such as VxWorks. Uh, we're gonna see later uh, a demo actually based on VxWorks um, uh, with, with RunX. So again, the long-term goal is to have proper flags standardized by CNCF. Uh, today, we're using two environmental variables to, uh, to specify the kernel or the RAM disk called RunX kernel and RunX RAM disk. Device assignment. As I mentioned, you, if, if you're interested in real time, you're most certainly interested in uh, driving a physical resource. Um, how do we do that? So we exploit uh, device assignment of Zen virtual machines. So for Zen, if you're not aware, offers the ability to uh, assign devices, you know, device pass through directly to VMs uh, by remapping the memory regions of these devices and the interrupts of these devices to uh, virtual machines. So what we can do is we, we can uh, basically run RunX, RunX passing a few extra arguments, asking RunX to also assign a device to the container you're about to start as a virtual machine. How that is done is done by, again, an extra flag. So you set an extra flag saying, these are my extra configuration options. And RunX is gonna, is gonna read these options and is gonna append them to the VM configuration file and then start the VM with it. So um, if you're not familiar, uh, Excel create, that is a utility as a command line tool to start a Xen VM, 
take a text uh, text configuration file with your virtual machine options, uh, starting from the virtual machine name uh, to uh, the you know the amount of memory, number of virtual CPUs, as well as any other configurations, and that includes, of course, uh, device assignment. Uh, so. Um, we added an extra uh, option that again is an environmental variable. This is different from the one before because it can only be set by the administrator. So by the user calling uh, CTR for container D, it cannot really be set from the container. Um, and you can customize any of these parameters in any way you like. So you can change the memory allocation. You can change the number of virtual CPUs. Uh, you can set real-time related configuration and option as much as you like. And of course, most importantly, you can add device assignment, uh, so device pass-through configuration options, such as MMIO region remapping, interrupt remapping, and even adding device tree snippet to expose, to advertise the presence of a new device via device tree inside your Xen virtual machine. So that everything I said so far is working today and is upstream in Runex. Um, uh, what I'm telling you now is about our vision for the future. <clears throat> in the future, uh, we would like to take this one step forward and actually allow a container to request a specific hardware resource. It could, the container could come with another set of flags to say, please, I would like an Ethernet card to be directly assigned to me or this other accelerator to be directly assigned to me. Even more importantly, nowadays, uh, many accelerators are in FPGA, uh, you know, Xilinx FPGA, or uh, they could be on, um, uh, on a coprocessor. So they are actually running their own software, their own kernel, uh, or they, they, you must specify the bitstream and load it in programmable logic to have the accelerator actually come to life. Um, uh, so, uh, the idea would be for the container to come with the FPGA bitstream, and then container we container D will call will call a service FPGA manager to program the bitstream into programmable logic. The new programmable logic block uh, will become alive, and then the resources assigned uh, the related resources to the of this FPGA block will be directly assigned to the virtual machine using Runex device assignment. So that allows you to have a container that comes with both the software to run on the ARM CPU cores, as well as the bitstream to load the accelerator in programmable logic so that they can be used as a pair. But that's not just about bitstreams. Uh, so this could be used for uh, coprocessor kernels running on other foreign um, uh, CPU clusters, such as little Cortex-Ms, Cortex-Rs, ARM uh, processors, uh, or even Xilinx AIE accelerators uh, arrays uh, that are running AIE kernel. So you could, lo you could load this way your own uh, AIE uh, kernel. So basically, uh, this is an infrastructure to deploy using containers, uh, not just software running on CPU cores, but also uh, the accelerators themselves in programmable logic or the kernel running on other foreign little processors. All right, I think now it's time for the demo to show you uh, how Runex runs. Uh, and I'm gonna first tell you what I'm gonna show you uh, using diagrams. And then I'm gonna show you the terminal and running it live. Uh, so we are gonna use Runex to start a little container uh, with a VxWorks kernel inside. Um, and then we are gonna use uh, Runex to start a little bare metal application uh, with direct access to hardware. The bare metal application has direct access to two hardware peripherals, the second serial, so the second UART, and also the TTC timer, which is a physical timer the bare metal application is gonna use for latency measurements. So I'm gonna now jump to uh, my terminal window. Uh, this is uh, Xilinx and PSOC board running here on my desk, uh, just booted. Uh, Zen is running, Dom0 is running. I'm gonna now execute this little script. It's just mounting a few C group mount points, and then it's starting container D here and loading three uh, containers. 
One is an Alpine Linux little container. The second one is a bare metal application I was mentioning. And the third one is the VxWorks uh, container I was mentioning. Um, I'm gonna first uh, run um, VxWorks. I forgot to run, of course, container D. Sorry, let me run the script. Execute container D, import the container. I'm gonna now run the first one with VxWorks inside. As you've seen, uh, VxWorks came to live, VxWorks 7 by Wind River. Thanks again, Rob Woolley uh, from Wind River for providing this container with VxWorks inside. Um, as a reference, I want to show you that there is a VM running, in fact, named uh, the same name that we gave to the container. Um, and also, uh, there is also, a, a, of course, a container running with VxWorks. Second thing we're gonna run is the bare metal application. So this is, um, as I said, the, the little bare metal application with control over the second UART as well as the TTC timer. So we're gonna see here, this is a started, previous to here was the previous run on the serial, but this is a second UART uh, and there is TTC latency measurement being done at the moment. They just completed uh, with a thousand iterations on the TTC timer. Um, and uh, with maximum and average uh, interrupt latency in nanosecond and so on. Uh, so if um, I go here, you're gonna see that there are in fact uh, two uh, VMs running. The second one has only 64 megabytes of RAM instead of the default of one gigabyte. Why? We're gonna look because we changed the configuration uh, using the uh, text file that we passed as an extra argument uh, to, um, uh, to run X. Uh, so as you see, we set the memory to 64 megabyte, and this overrode the default of uh, one gigabyte. Then uh, we mapped a set of interrupts here and to uh, IOMM, to MMIO region, uh, the one corresponding to um, the serial and the one corresponding uh, to the TTC timer. Finally, I'm gonna also run the Alpine Linux container, uh, and that's with the uh, kernel and uh, the um, RAM disk provided by uh, RunX itself. At the end of the presentation, so if you have any questions, please ask.